Hi there, I'm Brandon Bowler. This month I'm going to be building a DIY pipe marimba musical instrument. I'll be posting step-by-step -step instructions for you to follow along so that you can build your own pipe marimba. I also hope to include enough formulas and extra information that uh, if you choose to, you can customize your own instrument however you like. So let's get started. First of all, if you decide to use a circular saw like this one, you will need some safety items. I um, am wearing some safety glasses and some earplugs because it can get messy, uh, chunks of plastic can fly into your eyes, and also it can get really loud, and since this is a musical instrument, we want to protect our hearing. You'll also need a material to make your pipes out of for this step. I decided to use 3 inch corrugated tubing. Uh, the reason for this is that it's much cheaper than PVC pipe. This uh, is really flexible, you don't need U-joints and things like that, so it's really uh, easy to use. Um, you'll also need a knife, some tape, and a marker. Now I used a knife because it's much easier to use than the saw. I found that I could cut through this tubing in about 8 seconds for each full time around. So every time I made a cut it took me about 8 seconds to get through the whole thing. So it was pretty quick um, and pretty easy to do and also most people have a utility knife laying around. So a lot of you are probably wondering what the process is for this project. Um, as I mentioned earlier, you can use a circular saw to cut your tubes to length. Um, you can either go and use the formula that I've provided to figure out the lengths of the tubes and cut them exactly to length. Using this corrugated tube, however, the curves make measuring quite a challenge. I tried using string to measure, um, but then you have to attach the string to the actual pipe somehow. I tried using a tape measure, but tape measure is a little bit uh, too inflexible to measure the arcs accurately. So what I'm doing is uh, good old fashioned guess, check, and revise. What I do is I take a previous length of tubing. This one here is A flat. Um, and I have that marked on here with, with athletic tape um, and a marker. So there's uh, no confusion as to what pitch I'm, I'm making. So I'll take a lo uh, one of the larger sections, I'll place it on my roll of corrugated tubing. I'll grab my utility knife. Now again, you can use a circular saw, circular saw of some kind. Um, I didn't exactly get the best results with that. Um, I'm actually doing better by hand. Um, it takes me a little bit longer, but it's a little bit more accurate cuts and I can do it indoors which is great too because it's a little bit cold outside today so um, that makes things easy. Time out. I have two quick edits that I want to address. The first thing is the saw. I want to show you some quick footage of me cutting the pipe with the saw. So I lay it down and I slice it. Um, the problem was the saw never went the entire way through. Now if you have a saw that goes the whole way through that's fine. I had some burls on the end of my plastic that I ended up having to cut off with my knife anyways. So I just stuck to the utility knife. It didn't take me that much longer. I think that you guys could get good results either way, but I'm just giving you uh, my best practice from what I did. The other thing is that what I'm about to show you, I think I could improve upon. What I do, or what I did, was set the tube on top of the coil of tubing, and then I would cut longer than my existing length of tube. What I think I would do to change this process is to cut shorter than the current length of tubing. So I'd start at my longest length uh, at the deepest pitch that I wanted and then I would gradually get shorter and shorter and shorter. That way I could, if push came to shove, cut the exact same length and gradually whittle down the length as opposed to accidentally cut one too short. So that would be one way if you wanted to really cut down on the wasted tubing uh, you can, or if you're worried that you're going to be inaccurate, you can uh, place the tube on top of the coil of tubing, cut it the same length, and then whittle down eventually. Now granted, I'm probably going to have to vacuum the carpet because I'm making a little bit of a mess. But I'll place my arc on the roll of tubing, just like that. I don't know if you can see that or not. It looks something like this if I hold it up. You can see the two arcs there. I'll try to get it so that they're placed on top of each other. And then I'll go a couple inches beyond the larger tube. Now, this size does change as you get longer arcs. So, what you have to do is when you're, when you're short, when you're making shorter pitches, higher pitches, you need to add maybe 
two inches or so of tubing, and that's for the higher end. Now as I'm going along, I'm already up above three inches that I'm adding on to the earlier pipe length. So from A flat, let's see, I'm adding, boy here I'm adding about four to five inches. And now, I would rather measure long than short. The reason for that is, obviously, if I cut too short, then I have no way to go down to a lower pitch. I've already made all my shorter pitches. If I cut too long, I can whittle down to a uh, to a longer pitch. Um, so, for instance, A flat. If I cut too short, I wouldn't be able to go up a pitch to um, an A natural because I've already made an A natural. It's sitting over there. Um, however, if I cut too long, I can cut off you know half inches at a time to get to the G that I'm looking for right now. So. I stuck my knife in there, I made a little cut, and then I just worked my way around that edge. Be very careful, a good idea might be to wear leather gloves as you, as you cut. As you can see, I'm not having too much trouble cutting through this material. It's pretty thin, see that took me all of a couple seconds. And so, here's my arc, and now I'll show you how to measure the pitch.